Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. China began to implement export control rules for gallium and germanium related items in August. More than a month has passed since the implementation of the rules. Throughout August, it was not easy for the United States and other Western countries to obtain China's gallium and germanium. There is no news about the issuance of licenses in China. Even if foreign suppliers submit applications, it will take time to review and approve them. China has struck hard. Data shows that China's gallium and germanium exports fell to zero in August. U.S. media, Biden should stop. China's gallium and germanium exports to the United States dropped to zero. Gallium and germanium are semiconductor materials with high electron mobility and thermal conductivity, as well as high light absorption capacity and photoconductivity. These properties make gallium germanium widely used in infrared detectors, photoelectric conversion, lasers and other fields. China has certain advantages in the production and research and development of gallium and germanium materials. China has accumulated rich technical experience in long-term material research and development and production practices. It has also made significant progress in the production technology and quality control of gallium and germanium materials. With the rapid development of semiconductor and optoelectronic technology, the market demand for gallium and germanium materials continues to expand. More and more countries need to do business with China and import large amounts of gallium and germanium materials from China. However, it is not so easy for Western countries to purchase gallium and germanium from China. In early August this year, China implemented gallium and germanium export control rules for more than a month. Before the implementation of the rules, China's exports of gallium and germanium increased significantly. According to customs data, China's exports of germanium products in July were 8.63 tons, which doubled from the previous month. The export volume of gallium products was 5.15 tons, which also increased a lot. Overseas buyers are anxious to stock up and want to prepare more inventory, so they naturally need to buy quickly. After the rules were implemented, China's gallium and germanium exports dropped directly to zero throughout August. Even if foreign suppliers submit applications, it will take time for China to approve licenses. Without a license, the United States and Western countries will not be able to buy Chinese gallium and germanium. What is the U.S. response plan? The U.S. semiconductor industry has a very large demand for gallium and germanium, and China is one of the major countries producing gallium and germanium in the world. Therefore, in the past, the United States needed to import a large amount of gallium and germanium from China for semiconductor manufacturing. In other fields such as electric vehicles, military equipment, and infrared optics, the United States has to rely on imports of gallium and germanium from China to meet demand. As long as relevant supply cuts occur, all walks of life in the United States will be affected to a certain extent. Of course, the United States cannot remain indifferent and has also proposed response plans. The United States wants to sign a scrap recycling agreement with a Canadian company to extract gallium from scrap. Since the United States 
has a certain inventory of germanium, it mainly deals with the crisis of insufficient gallium inventory. The question is, can America's waste recycling response work? Theoretically, the United States can obtain a certain amount of gallium from waste products, but this can only alleviate urgent needs. After all, the quantity of waste products is limited. It is estimated that the United States itself does not know how to use limited waste products to meet the huge industrial development needs. The demand is only one thing. On the other hand, extracting gallium from waste is a technical problem that requires a delicate separation and purification process. The United States does not have a complete gallium supply chain and naturally lacks relevant technical support. Even if the United States solves the technical problem, there is still the next challenge waiting for the United States, such as the high cost of waste recycling, especially when the technology is not mature enough and the process is not perfect. If the cost is too high, it will make it difficult for the waste recycling program to be widely used in the market, thus affecting its feasibility and actual effect. This kind of non-cost-effective response plan will bring huge economic pressure to all walks of life in the United States. No matter how you look at it, the United States has lost the supply of gallium and germanium from China. No matter how many solutions there are, there are drawbacks. It seems that the only way out for the United States is to try its best to obtain licenses, but this is not what the United States has the final say. U.S. media, Biden should stop now. To untie the bell, one must tie it. The United States is responsible for the fact that things have reached this point. If the United States had not arbitrarily undermined the development of chip globalization and restricted this and that, it would not have made the matter a big deal. From the perspective of foreign media, China's gallium and germanium export controls are a counterattack against the US restrictive measures and they hit the United States seven inches. The United States relies on China's gallium and germanium imports. When all gallium and germanium stocks are exhausted, the United States will you will understand what the price of decoupling is. Some American media have warned Biden, hoping that he will stop soon. According to an article, the United States cannot stop China's rise, published by the American media. It was pointed out that the United States implementation of the export ban on chips and semiconductor equipment to China was to curb China's rapid development, which triggered China's counterattack in the field of key metals. The article also mentioned that many technologies restricted by the United States in the past have been broken through by China, such as satellite technology, geospatial technology, etc. Finally, the American media warned Biden to stop in time. Everyone knows the truth. There are rising voices from the American industry opposing U.S. restrictions. Bill Gates said that if the United States does not export chips to China, it will force them to be self-sufficient, and the United States will lose a large number of high-paying jobs. It turns out that Bill Gates is right. China is already building a localized ecosystem for chips. The Kirin 9000S chip used in Huawei's new mobile phone Mate 60 is produced in mainland China. This has attracted close attention from the United States, but there is no evidence that the Kirin 9000S uses American technology. The United States 
should understand that restrictions will only speed up China's self-sufficiency, and China also has its own trump card. The United States is afraid that it will not be able to accept the export control of rare metals.